dreaming things, etc. But when they're used properly, this again gives you a picture of, of earthquake precursors that were never anticipated. With certain kinds of long wavelength radiation that's emitted both before and after the earthquake. And again, this has been recently cut by the Obama budget. And again, I stress the point, if you take a look at what a tiny section of the, what a tiny amount of money it is that goes into, into NASA, this is not done to save money. The intention of this is not to save money. The intention of this is to kill human beings. That's the driving policy behind this. Well, if you compare that to the extraordinary amount of money we're spending to spy on our own citizens. Yes, right. You know, I mean, we have money. If we, you know, rather, we're looking for non-existent national security threats while ignoring, shutting down the programs that will actually point to real national security threats. So the whole thing is just completely phony, right? It's fascist. The only unifying thread you get through it is this Zeus policy, is that this is the Olympian Zeus. That's the only thing that unifies all these distinct, distinct activities. Yeah. And it's given to people piecemeal, and to the extent that people take it piecemeal, they're never going to be able to get a full picture of what is the threat that actually, both the threat that's, that's aimed at them, but also what they actually, the way out of this requires them to get a unified picture of what exactly is creative thinking humanity. We'll give a couple more. Uh, you take a look. This one now is something that just went offline, just lost funding. This is not a U.S. satellite, but this is a French satellite. But it gives you an idea of what we should be doing from here. Uh, if, if Obama were not criminally, I say criminally negligent, but this is an intentional negligence. If we're not, this would be the sort of thing we'd be looking at. This looks at earthquake precursor effects in the Earth's ionosphere. Now this is, again, incredibly important. The Earth's ionosphere is implicated in a number of different um, major transformations on Earth, possibly paying, playing a major role in the 62 million year cycle, the 145 million year galactic cycle, and other ones. Possibly playing a major role in animal evolution. Definitely playing a major role in certain kinds of regulatory physiological functions, like the ability for, animal, for animals, including humans, to keep time. If... Um, this is a layer of the atmosphere generated largely by the interaction of the, of the biosphere with radiation from the from sun, creating a charged conductive plasma layer. Now this charged conductive plasma layer changes its height with uh, incident solar radiation. I'll make the point uh, another animation showing that you can see, for instance, from day to nighttime, the thickness of this layer changes. From season to season, the thickness of this layer changes. Now, the combination of having that conductive layer above the Earth and then a conductive layer in the, on the surface of the Earth creates an oscillating cavity of electromagnetic radiation, which creatures use to maintain time. If you, if you block human beings off from that, in a, normally kept in a dark room with no access to the outside, the human, human beings will still be able to recognize the change of roughly a daily cycle on their own, without the absence of any people have experienced maybe something similar to that in your ability to wake up when your alarm clock should wake you up without the alarm clock doing so. That you're responding to other things besides your normal five, what you'd call your five senses. If you shut people off from this electromagnetic radiation, they lose the ability to respond to that daily clock cycle. So we know it plays a major role in biology. It's implicated in certain types of heart disease and other major physiological, if you take a look at rates of heart disease, you take a look at um, uh, other biological disorders, their time to solar cycles, implicated in their being time to the solar cycles is the fact that they depend on this radiation that's generated by the Earth-Sun interaction. Now, so that's a very complicated thing. Lots is going on, lots going on here. This satellite, the Demeter satellite, was meant to take a look at a number of the known changes in the ionosphere. Eliminate those. So it became in an orbit that matched the, uh, the, the sun's orbit, the, the observed orbit of the sun from the earth, so it could remove the effects of the sun, and then look for smaller scale changes that would be caused by A, human activity, but then B, volcanic and other kinds of seismic activity. And they did. With a number of the major earthquakes recently, they observed precursors of the type. And it was, this was sketchy. A lot more work needs to be done in this area. But enough was done that you could see that, at least in a number of these cases, clear precursors were observable 
in the ionosphere, in the electromagnetic uh, phenomena around the Earth that could have let us forecast these earthquakes. This is now, this satellite is now offline. And we've got nothing similar launched from the, uh, from the, the U.S. end. But this would again, combined with the prior two, this would form uh, our extended sensorium, our ability to be able to forecast these disasters, possibly with an incredible amount of lead time. I mean, any lead time, even around an hour's lead time or so, which this next one proposes they'd be able to get, would be excellent. But some of these, worked into a science, could potentially give us the several weeks lead time that, you're, that you described earlier. I'll move on to sort of a, just kind of give the roster. This one, again, not a U.S. satellite. This is a Russian satellite. Um, but... You know, some of the problems that, that occurred with it, you could attribute to also a lack of U.S. involvement in a program of this sort. Namely, in this case, this is something that was only up for a few months before it had uh, an equipment malfunction. But this one, the Coronas Photon, the goal of this satellite was to observe the, the proton flux from the sun, specifically with the intent of correlating it to seismic processes on the Earth, looking for earthquakes and... Uh, there was a forecast predicted by Russian scientists correlation between this proton flux and earthquake activity here on the Earth. Um, for very reasons of equipment failure, this shut down. It was only up during the period of the, of the solar minimum and shut down right before we moved into this period of intense activity, which has been correlated to the other earthquakes. And the researchers are still very clear that, that, this, would have get, that this was something that would have been able to forecast what occurred with the later activity. And they are perfectly solid that they with that this they'd be able to have at least a 70 minute lead time, based on the other past correlations, based on sort of a retrospective view of what's going on. They would have had a 70 minute lead time warning for some of these major quakes. That's significant. That's hugely significant. Um, but again, this is no longer no longer active. There's nothing, certainly not with the with the the insanely tiny budget that Obama's giving to NASA on the U.S. end that would correlate to that. We've got a number of different instruments there that are observing Sun-Earth interactions, but again, not enough. Not enough to get a very a clear, detailed sense of what the, the interplanetary magnetic field is and all of its relationships. Uh, this next one is another Russian satellite. Part of that same... Part of that same... Um, system also intended to be observing the Earth-Sun relationship specifically with respect to, uh, with respect to earthquakes. Let's give you a sketch. There's a few other ones which have been useful. This one is a, uh, uh, a German satellite, this champ here. This one was saying that uh, it was taking a look at it, making maps of the Earth's gravitational field and Earth's geomagnetic field. Again, looking back retrospectively at prior earthquakes, the ones that hit uh, uh, the two big quakes in Indonesia in 2004, 2007, they were able to realize that they had signs. And looking back at what they, the data they had, in the data they saw signs preceding these earthquakes. So again, a different method of mapping. Each one of these is important. It gives you a completely different image of what's happening on the planet. Between them, though, you're constructing one, you're realizing there's one invisible causal process there that could be seen, could be known, and is enough to save lives in the event of a, in the event of a, of a crisis of the sort that we saw, that we just saw in Japan, that we just saw in Haiti. This would be, this would be that to the extent that we lack this sort of a, of a, of a unified system, people will die. There's no reason not to be moving with a program like this except that you want people to die. That is the only argument for this. And there's no reason to argue, to, to argue against this. And this is what you're getting right now, the really irresponsible discussion in the press, coming from different, uh, uh, the worst of the public officials. Um, that, you know, this is, you know, this is, well, there's no way any of this could possibly work anyway. All this is fundamentally unknowable. We've got plenty of evidence, more than enough evidence, here we'll be releasing more documentation and this is completely knowable. And with more study, possibly even subject to our, our
definitely subject to our, our emergency response action, possibly, and I would argue even necessarily, ultimately subject to our conscious control. To the extent that you really understand how these processes work, we should, mankind's destiny is to be able to act directly on these and control them. In the meanwhile, the bare minimum we could do is be able to keep them from killing human beings. So she sort of gives you a picture, but that image, this image here is what we should have as a, uh, a real sense of what, what do you mean by when we're saying the human sensorium? And what is it that, what is the, what is the image of man that's attempting to be destroyed here? Because that's the conscious target of this. Um, and maybe in a minute we can go through some more of what, what it actually means, some, uh, some proof used in the Crab Nebula of why it is that the causality for this system couldn't be contained entirely within the Earth.